Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with us today. It is actually three o'clock in the afternoon, which is a little bit late for me to start filming, but we are just getting into a couple of projects that I wanted to share with you. We're not gonna be able to get them all finished today, but we'll definitely bring the camera out again tomorrow and show you where we got with everything. But where are we gonna start? Let's start up over here. I was sharing this with you, I don't know when it was, last week, about our sledding hill. This is our sledding hill, it goes way up to the top over there, and we like to string lights all the way up it so that the kids can sled in the winter time. We were just checking the weather forecast and it's supposed to get to negative 27 degrees Celsius within two days, which means that the ground is going to freeze solid. So we wanna get all of these posts that we're going to string the lights on put in all the way up the hill. Obviously, these posts would hurt a fair bit if you were to hit them coming down on a sled. So we are using some pool noodles, some pink ones. This was all Dan could find at the store this time of year to go over top of these posts. We're actually gonna have to cut them down the side and slip them over them so that if anybody was to hit them, it would not hurt or at least it wouldn't hurt badly. Hi. Okay, go for it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a lot of air. It always scares me a little bit when the kids are sledding when it's like this because it's quite icy. But the other thing the weather forecast did tell us is that we are going to get some fresh snow and that will make this a lot less deadly. So that worked. So Dan just went down and sliced them and it worked perfectly. So that's great. These are called T-posts because they look like a T. And I actually didn't learn this until, even though we've been using these posts for a while, <laughs> until this past summer. Like, why are these called T-posts? Oh, pretty obvious. <laughs> We might not have enough daylight left to actually string the lights up, but at least if we get the posts in before it gets too cold, we can string the, pipe, um, the lights up either tomorrow or the next day. The second project that we're going to be working on is bringing down the uh, gate that we're using to convert into that coffee table. I will link the video where we first talked about that up here for you if you wanna check that out. So what we had to do with that gate is put it in the house so that it could kind of climatize to the humidity level in the house and dry out a little bit. Now, every time I walk past this old car, I always get comments about it. So I'll give you the story about this car in just a sec. But first, let's get a fire going because it is chilly in here. Okay, even if you are not into old hot rods like this, you'll probably appreciate this story because I'm not into them, but I love this story so much. So this car, I think it's a 1972 Pontiac Le Mans. I'm not 100% on the year. I'll have to double check that with Dan, but I know it's Pontiac Le Mans. When Dan was 16, he had a Pontiac Le Mans and he absolutely loved that car. Dan and I were dating at the time and I remember how stoked he was to have this car. And I can't remember what the reason was, but for some reason he sold it and he sold it for a hundred dollars. So it was one of those things that kind of always sat in the back of his mind as something that he really regretted because he always wanted to restore that old car. One night Dan was flipping through Kijiji and I think it was either Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace and he came across a Pontiac Le Mans that looked a lot like his Pontiac Le Mans from when he was 16. And I remember him talking to me about it and he was so excited. He's like, what, you know, what do you think of the idea of me buying this old car and restoring it? I always wanted to restore an old Le Mans. And, and it wasn't extremely expensive. I can't remember how much they were selling it for at the time. Again, I'll have to check with Dan on the details of that. But I was like, you know what? This has always been a dream of yours, go for it. So we started to talk with the owner of it and just getting some more details. And it turns out that the owner was living in the area where Dan and I grew up. As he started to talk to this guy more and more, it started to seem more and more likely that this was actually Dan's old car. And it turns out after dialoguing back and forth and looking at the old insurance papers that it actually was Dan's old car. So of course at that point he was like, I'm buying this car. I don't care how much this car is, I'm going to buy this car. So we of course were really excited. We decided to make a holiday of it. We drove down 
got a hotel, went and checked out the car, and the most wild thing about this car is not only is this the actual car that Dan had when he was 16, but the in original insurance papers that Dan had signed and his mom had signed because in British Columbia you need to have a parent's signature in order to insure a car if you're 16 years old, and it had his mom's signature on it and all of the um, insurance papers from all of the owners since then and even the owners before. So Dan had bought this car off of one of his high school friends and those insurance papers were also in, or transfer papers I guess they would be, were also in this car. So to say this car has some serious sentimental value would be uh, an understatement. It is, Dan and I sat in this car when I was 15 and he was 16. Isn't that wild? On these seats as a matter of fact, <laughs> I just think that's absolutely the craziest thing. We won't be doing anything with this car for the next couple of years. We're actually moving it out to an undercover storage spot. But Dan's plan is that when he has a little bit more time, he wants to sink some time and obviously some money into this car and restore it back to its original glory. So every time you see this car now, you now know the story. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to the house and get the gate and get it brought down here. I'm probably gonna need some help for that because it's pretty heavy. Actually, I'll just throw it in the back of the truck and drive it down here. I'm walking a little bit gingerly here because it's been so warm since we had that snowfall that there's a lot of ice on the driveway now. There's a snowball fight going on too. <laughs> but um, it's really icy and I don't wanna fall. This is actually my crop garden here. If you guys remember back to the summer where my potatoes and my onions were growing, that is where we're standing right here. And the reason that we don't permanently fence it, we just use hot wire fencing, is because the sledding hill goes right through it. I like, yeah, I like the pink posts. Those look great. So we're up at the top of the hill. So the house is right down there. Just to give you a little bit more perspective. You can actually snowboard down this hill. It is getting a little bit dark for filming outside. So I'm gonna go back up to the house and then Dan's gonna come and help me with the coffee table or the what is currently a gate will be a coffee table just because I am not going to be able to get it out by myself. <laughs> this sledding hill makes me smile. The shop was incredibly noisy during this section of filming, so I decided to spare your ears and voice over this part of the video for you. So Dan helped me bring the gate in. It was really, really heavy. And then we used some power tools to remove all the rusted on bolts. They had been on there for over 40 years, so they were pretty hard to get off. We had to use some penetrating fluid on them. As you can see, they left these holes and we have actually decided not to plug them. We were gonna put some wood plugs in, but we actually really like the character of them. And since we're not leaving the straps on, we wanted some um, evidence of those straps having been there. So we're going to leave those holes. We ran it through our old planer. Dan and I have had this planer for over 20 years. We bought it when we bought our first house and it doesn't do the best job, but is good enough for rustic projects. I love the way this wood looks when it's been through the planer. Dan and I ran the last four boards through and I am so excited to show you what the finished table is going to look like. It is going to be so beautiful. We're on to day two now and we just got the fire going down in the shop so that we can go do all the woodworking down there. Dan is down there testing all of the lights for the ski hill. I am in the freeze dryer room right now and I just got the last of the sanding done for all of the mudding on the drywall and now we are getting it all primed. So we're gonna get this all done up and then we're gonna head outside. This mudding job looks pretty good actually. Yeah. Not bad, good tag team effort. I'm quite happy with the way that this drywall turned out. This light in here is terrible. Once we start putting in all of the shelving and stuff and we show you guys that part of the process, we'll bring in some better lights in here. Primer doesn't take very long to dry, so I'm just gonna let this dry and then give it one more coat and then head outside to the shop. I am so grateful to be finished with 
the mudding. We ended up getting all of the posts all the way up the hill last night. We just have a couple of more of the pool noodles to stick on the top ones. And then we're just gonna test out all our lights. We may go to town later on today. We were just talking about that and run some errands and get some more lights if we need them. <clears throat> I can hear Dan planing wood down there. So what we decided to do is to actually get all of the shelving for the freeze dryer room done at the same time. So get all the planing and the sanding and all of that done at the same time as we're doing the coffee table. It just made sense to do it that way. So let's see where he got to. So we have all of the wood when I say we, I mean Dan has all of the wood run through the planer. This is all the ones that we're gonna be using for the tabletop for the freeze dryer and my workspace. And then these are the ones that we're using for the coffee table. So we're just gonna get all of the wood planed for the whole project and then we'll get the sanding out and we'll start sanding everything or the sander out, I should say. So Dan was just explaining to me that for him, when he's building projects like this, like he's not a, he's not a woodworker by trade. So all of this kind of stuff is things that he's just sort of learned on his own, but it's easier for him to do the project in stages. So he's going to be doing the countertop here first, getting that all installed, and then we'll visualize kind of what it is that we want next as far as the shelving goes. That's the way that he did the pantry and it turned out so beautifully. He does not need my help because he's just used doing the short boards to run through the planer. So I'm going to go back up to the house and get lunch on. My daughter Claire made a huge batch of chili last night. She loves to cook. She's one of those people that's just naturally good at it. Gorgeous chili. And because it is so thick, I'm actually gonna add some more, ooh, we're steaming up. I'm going to add some more um, sauce, like tomatoes to it so that we can stretch it out a little bit more. We have some leftover beans and some leftover paprikash. Some delicious garlic buns. She made a garlic butter to spread on the top of them. So good. We are just going to take a lunch break now, but we'll be back with you in a few hours. See you soon, guys. Okay, now we're gonna head back outside and get all the lights tested for the ski hill and get some more woodworking done. We do try to get outside every afternoon, no matter what the weather, unless of course it's way too cold and we're heading towards temperatures like that. I just checked the forecast, minus 30. Burrs, that's at night and then around minus 20 during the day. So that is, that is too cold. When it is super cold into the negative 30s, it's really important to not be outside for really long periods of time. And if you are outside to wear something like a cowl, like I'm wearing, or a scarf so that you can have it over your face, of course, so your face doesn't freeze, but also so your air is warmed because really cold air can actually damage your lungs. Fortunately, we don't get temperatures down into the negative 40s that often here. That's when it gets really dangerous, but it used to be like that in this area. This wood is so, well, I love it. So weird. You have to kind of do it all in order. Like a little puzzle? Yeah. Um, well, why don't I sand them and you test lights? Sure. And get all that done. Do you know where the sander is? Uh, I Okay, I know that you guys do not want to sit and watch me sound for hours on end. So what I'm going to do is go grab some of the teak oil and oil this so that you can see how beautiful it looks when the oil's on. And then I'll get to work and get all of this done so that probably by the next video, we'll actually be installing all of this. Hey, cute guy, how are ya? I am actually, I'm not a cat person. I've never really been a cat person but this guy has definitely weaseled his way into my heart, haven't ya? Oh, don't worry, she's not gonna hurt you. He's still not 100% sure about Maple. Our cats that have grown up with Maple aren't scared of her at all, but he's still a little apprehensive. Did you wanna come in? Do you wanna come in? She is not one bit interested in coming in the shop at all. Look at that, so beautiful.
isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I love it. I have a lot to do before I am going to be able to get all of this wood stained, but I can hardly wait because each piece of wood is very unique and different. And I always have a few of my favorites. Like I have a few favorite stairs going upstairs because our stairs are made out of this wood. And I have a few favorite shelves in the apothecary and in the pantry. And I'm sure it's going to be the same way in the freeze dryer room. One extremely important thing to remember whenever you oil anything with a cloth is to make sure that you hang it up somewhere where it's laying flat outside, not in a building. Many, many years ago, Dan and I built a huge addition on one of our houses. And when we had just finished the entire thing and we had oiled the floor, we had a hardwood floor and we had put, thrown all of the rags into a bucket and put them in the bathroom that we had just renovated. And we woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of the fire alarm and all of those rags in that bucket had lit on fire. We just didn't know. It was one of those things, just total ignorance. And thank goodness we were able to put it out. We ended up having to repaint the entire addition because it just got completely smoke damaged. But at least the house didn't burn down and it was a lesson we will never forget. And now to head <laughs> and now to head back up to the house to get all of the or to get the chicken ready, I'm going to make barbecued chicken wings or not barbecued. I'm not actually barbecuing them, but barbecue sauce on the chicken wings. And I'm just going to bake those in the oven and then all of the toppings for the pizza. I'm going to make the same barbecue sauce that I made when I made the meatloaf and I'm going to make a fair bit of it. It's going to be dark early now. I know, it's going to keep getting darker and darker until the solstice on the 21st. Yes. You felt like the summer solstice came really fast? Yeah. I wish the winter solstice would come fast. But you know it never does. <laughs> no. The winter solstice takes so long to come. It does. And this is mess. Okay, a little mustard. I want to have everyone save up enough money. That? Yeah, oh yes, it does, I know. Uh, just read on top of there, please. Thank you. I'm gonna use a little bit of balsamic vinegar in this one and a little bit of white vinegar. A little this, a little that, oh, and a pinch of this. <laughs> a pinch of this, a pinch of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Grab something from under my kitchen sink. <laughs> now I'm gonna cook this on the stove for a few minutes. And while that's heating up on the stove, put all my chicken in here. Oliver, can you go get my light, please? Okay, so now I am going to dump all this barbecue sauce onto my chicken. It was right there. I know. Okay, so now I've added my barbecue sauce to my chicken wings, and I'm just gonna give them a good stir. Since it's only four o'clock, I'm actually going to leave this to marinate in here for about half an hour in the fridge, and then I'll pop it in the oven. Okay, perfect. And then I'll dump this out. And then you'll want to cut this into four even chunks. So let's use the smaller one for this one, since this is a smaller pan. This is really nice pizza dough. Nice job. Thank you. You're welcome. We are going to put all of our pizzas outside. So it's nice and cold outside and it'll slow down the rising process. So now, whoops, gonna stick our chicken wings and our one leg, <laughs> said one leg in that pack, in here. And we'll get these baking in the oven. Pop these in the oven.
Okay, you want to move the pizzas off there so I can move, or at least two of them, so that I can move the... I'll move my two prettiest ones. Those are very pretty. You did a very nice job. Now we'll pop those in the oven. We'll take out... Mm -mm -mm. This is going to be a yummy supper. Those are done, looking spectacular. Okay, we'll just put all of the pickles on the table, and then you guys can just help yourselves to those. All right, my friends, that is it for us. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. All right, guys, let's dig in.